Shark Dropper Studios presents to you. Doppel Avenue Hurt. Hello, and welcome to the Doppel Avenue Season 1 Wrap-Up Podcast. I'm your host, John Laswith. And, uh, well, I guess I'll just get right to it and introduce all of the uh, integral people behind the kind of film noir fictional podcast that you guys have been listening to for the past couple months. First guy I'm going to introduce is Paul Went, a.k.a. Jose Caraballo. Caraballo. <laughs> <laughs> I asked you before the podcast how to pronounce the name, and you just... Caraballo. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say that next. <laughs> next person. Uh, this is probably a fan favorite. She plays Edith, James Key's secretary. Amy, say hi to everyone. Hi. Can you do the Edith voice real quick? No. Oh. Uh, if you beg, maybe. <laughs> well, no, after the podcast. <laughs> uh, next up is the person who... Literally put this podcast together, you know, bit by bit. The editor for Doppel Avenue Hurt, Jonathan Moss. Hello, hello. All right. And I also play Arthur as well. Oh, sure. yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> Arthur is a pretty cool character. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really cool. <laughs> a few others. Yeah. yeah Next up is the star of Doppel Avenue Hurt, the voice of the main character, James Keyes, Kyle Appiard. Hello. Say hi. Hi, everybody. I also did the announcer that you hear at the end, the ridiculous announcer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. And last and certainly least. Yep, certainly. <laughs> obviously. The creator and writer. <laughs> the least important part. Of uh, <laughs> Doppel Avenue. The least Hurt. important part of the podcast. <laughs> Robert Lamb. Say hi to everyone. Hi, everyone. Yeah. I also okay. voiced the gay guy. Oh. The gay husband. Well, I thought alleg- that was just you. Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> Allegedly gay. He went with the speaking voice. So. Yeah, I just went with my normal <laughs> voice. <laughs> All right, I'm going to, so basically the point of this podcast is just kind of, basically just kind of wrap up and like uh, just review like all, you know, the the first season of this kind of brand new venture that we've all undergone through. Yeah, it kind of pulls back the curtain to yeah, who we are and what we're doing and, right. and how it all came together. You yeah. know, the fictional podcast is something that's still, it's still a new kind of medium, so to speak. Sure. I mean, it's kind of a throwback to the fictional radio dramas, but they there weren't iPods and iPhones back then. They didn't have iPods in the forties. Is that um, what you're saying? Maybe the fifties. Sure? <laughs> uh, yeah, the fifties, I think. Is I mean, the iPod. I did. So, I don't know about you guys. Robert, as the like, writer of Doppel Avenue Hurt, Hurt right. where where did you get the idea to do not just Doppel Avenue Hurt, but uh, just a fictional podcast in general? Well, you and I actually like talked about it. Uh, what was it last year? Like late last year, um, Kyle here was doing. Um, his own podcast, Word, uh, of, the Word of the Bay. <laughs> nice plug. Yep. And yeah. um, check yeah, it out on iTunes. <laughs> yeah, check, check it out on iTunes, iTunes or SharkDropper.com. <laughs> um, <laughs> Shameless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll fit some in. Um, and yeah, uh, John and I were talking about doing fictionalized in podcasts. a totally platonic way. I just might add, like, right? <laughs> well, is there really? Like, was that really need to be stated? <laughs> like, well, I just you made it seem like we were talking like we were like Yeah, we were in a relationship <laughs> and we just thought like okay. this will really just take us to the next level. Okay. That's what I was in a about. relationship. <laughs> right. Did you guys make it to the next level? Oh yeah, we are there. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah, we talked about doing a fictionalized uh, podcast series and we actually had a few ideas, but uh this was the one that we thought would be kind of the easiest one to start with and we liked the idea of starting with a comedy and okay. uh we got Jonathan on board to edit Kyle liked the idea of doing it, and he he like became the main star. He voiced the character, did a great job, mm-hmm. and Jonathan edited it. And yeah, we just all came together and made the series. Correct me if I'm wrong, Kyle, but didn't we come over here for a recording of Word of the Bay? I think that's what that was. And I think we came over here for a recording. I, I I had told you for a while uh, because you had you had joined the Word of the Bay podcast about um, six months in. And then you were doing it regularly with us. And then as soon as Robert got this whole setup in, you know, we, we brought you in. I was like, you got to meet Jonathan because Jonathan's the, the – he fucking graduated with a, with a degree in audio engineering. You got to meet him because, like, this is, this is like a perfect marriage of, like, of, of what we're trying to do and his skill set. 
So mm-hmm. I brought you in, introduced you to Robert, and he, he kind of, you guys kind of talked about the project itself. And yeah, we didn't know each other before this. Yes. No. So Jonathan, oh, yeah. uh, you know, Kyle mentioned you went to school for this. What yeah. was your first thought when you first, when you were first approached with the idea of doing a fictional podcast? It was uh, uncharted territory for me. Uh, um, have you ever heard of a? A fictional podcast like this before? No, never before, actually. Um, before getting into this project, um, I was kind of listening to podcasts here and there. So I was in like the Adam Carolla show, Stuff right. You Should Know, you know, the, the big hitters. Um, so when Robert sort of brought this idea to me, I was a little skeptical. I didn't know exactly. I didn't really have a vision for it, but... After he kind of sort of explained it, he read the – or I, I got to read the first script. Started kind of like envisioning this entire world inside of my head. Um, but I didn't know like how to do it because I've never right. – everything I've ever done is either like hip-hop or heavy metal, rock and roll, indie rock, just music. Never a Albums. film noir fictional podcast. Never. <laughs> no. Right. This is my first film noir. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Wait, you don't do these all the time? No. No. Actually, John and I, when we first talked about it, we were talking about making it a, ser- a serious series of like actual cases and, and not adding the comedy aspect. The comedy aspect actually came out later, and right. I just thought it'd be kind of cool to do like a spoof of that genre in the vein of the naked gun or something like that. Yeah. No, Robert, you're actually a film noir aficionado, right? You're actually, yeah. mm-hmm. you're actually a huge, uh, <laughs> he said it so confidently. <laughs> yeah, Jonathan yeah. as well. Jonathan is a, is a big film noir buff. Yeah. So what is it about film noir marriage. that you thought made it perfect for, uh, well, I love the idea that like film noirs were so prominent in the forties. Right. And this fictional noir that we wanted to do was going to like, it doesn't take place in the 40s, but because fictional podcasts are kind of like the same as those old 40s radio show, I thought it was like a good place to start right. in that in that kind of genre. Yeah, and he was, you know, he was explaining this to me, and I was like, you know, I love film noir. So I was, I was thinking, all right, film noir. Okay. I got to read the first script, and I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> are you serious? I actually um, I saw the script on his table, and I'm like, oh, you're doing – like a series, and he's like, "Yeah," and I'm like, "What? Well, I, I have to be in." I was like, "Kind of forced myself into this." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. yeah, nobody really wanted you, but yeah, yeah, yeah. We we're like, "All right, <laughs> well, I guess." Like, we lost. <laughs> yeah. You just showed up here with a microphone in hand. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready, guys. Yep. <laughs> so, how did Amy? How did you get into this? Um, she... I don't really remember. I think Robert's like, "Hey, you want to do a voice on this podcast?" I'm like, "Okay." That's what like we started with. Uh, finding the main character, which was Kyle, and uh, that decision was was more or less like it's got to be one of us because yeah. <laughs> like no, we can't re- like there's so much dialogue on every page like we can't rely on anybody else to like yeah we wanted it to be at least like me John or Kyle to be yeah. the main character and I remember <laughs> that like when me and uh, John and Kyle got together we read the first script and we went through it and I remember like Kyle was like well let's all get like record our own voices and then see like who we think should play the main character and then like i think it was that night you like texted us and you're like i got it done we're like all right you can do it (laughs) 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 have you have you heard the original recording of james keys yeah it's so crazy well it was like really fast paced because i i told kyle like do something kind of like fred mcmurray in double uh indemnity and that's what he did he like looked up those old clips on youtube and yeah. and i looked like exactly that 55 miles an hour yeah uh, yeah, yeah that one from dialogue, double indemnity which is awesome. so quick yeah. while we're on the subject of james keys robert can you uh tell us a little bit about the main character of the series james keys kind of give us a quick rundown of who he is and what he's trying to accomplish i mean james keys is a guy who moved to brentwood heights which is a made-up place in illinois and uh, that also in a made up place. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. Actually, I think it's a. I think it's a city in California, Cal- uh, Brentwood, Brentwood, California. It probably yeah. is. I just. I don't know. I, I like. I don't even remember how I came up with the name. I just wrote it down. I was like, that's good. <laughs> Shout out to all our California listeners. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> know, right? yeah, we do have a big, big following. Yeah, we have a big following out there. Hey, um, but that's what uh, James Keys actually moved from California to Illinois. What did I do? You're wearing oh. a California shirt. I yeah. just wanted to point it out. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good place. Um. Yeah, anyways, so he moves there. He's kind of, like, down on his luck. He had a great life in California, and he moved to Brentwood Heights, and, and kind of everything wasn't that great now. Like, he, he got kicked out of the forest. He, uh, Him and his wife split, and now he's just 
become a PI, and he keeps doing like the same old boring cases, cheating husband, find missing children, that kind of stuff. And he's just kind of tired of it all until Terrence O'Reilly shows up. Mr. Keys, Mr. James Keys, who are you? I tried to stop him, Mr. K. He's quicker than my fucking cat. I need to talk to you. It's urgent. Urgent, you say? When I heard him say this, my body tingled. I was looking for excitement, and this may be what I needed. But that's what I'm saying is, like, he shows up, and it kind of sparks this interest in, in Keys to actually go out and kind of live through those 40 characters that he likes. Like, those are the characters he looks up to is those 40s film noir characters. He mentions, like, Humphrey Bogart and, and so Sterling Hayden and all them. Do you think that when Keyes moved to uh, Brentwood Heights that he very much said to himself, like, I'm going to embody these characters? Like, he's, it's kind of like a new start for him where he's like, I'm going to be the embodiment <laughs> of this. And, like, maybe he was a little... Like, when he lived in California, he was a different person entirely. Yeah, I think he was, like, completely different. I think when he started doing the PI game, he just... I, I don't know if he ever really was into technology. That's, like, his biggest thing is yeah. he wasn't... He's not big into technology. He doesn't like, like using it. But definitely as a PI, he doesn't use any kind of technology past, like, 1950s because he says he likes it the way they used to do it, like how they used to solve cases. Mm. I just want to say real quick, I think one of the reasons why the character James Keyes is so successful is because of, uh, of Kyle here. He did Thanks. a really great job of bringing the character to life. Thank you. And so, Kyle, I got to ask, when you were uh, – you know, basically just kind of trying to find your voice, trying to find the voice for keys. What kind of things did you want to bring to the table that weren't necessarily on the script, so to speak? I knew for a fact that when I, when I saw the the first episode script that I'm like, okay, this isn't going to be a, like a silly voice or I'm not going to – that the whole Humphrey Bogart thing, that's not going to work because I don't know if I can maintain that over an entire 12-episode arc yeah. with that much dialogue, with that much with that much um, voiceover, voiceover work. Over. And Robert Robert's experience with Phil Noir was like the Maltese Falcon and um, Double Indemnity and those kind of Humphrey Bogart movies. And my inspiration for Phil Noir, the only the only Phil Noir I was ever exposed to growing up was Max Payne. Max Payne was like the like the game that I loved when I grew up in high school. And so I love you that have game those yeah those little <laughs> yeah, vignettes, yeah. those little comic vignettes where yeah. he's voicing over, and like that's very much what inspired me to for his like voiceover work was like that that low voice like that low right and i will say this i'll i'll, I'll pull back the curtain cuz this is kind of what this whole podcast is about half the shit you hear Keith say like half is like really like big one liner one liners <laughs> Are you improvising completely off the script? Yeah. yeah. And like <laughs> my last take. Yeah, it's your last take. We're just like, ah, I'm gonna fuck around. And I'm like, motherfucker, you, whatever you give me is free game. Yeah. I mean, it got to the so it got that... to the point where I was like, I knew, like, I think it was maybe I, I picked up on you doing that early. So it got to the point where I was like, all right, I'm gonna give him the, the silly take at the end. And more more often than not, like that's the one that went in. That's the one I went I'm in. Like that's perfect. I'm yeah. sort of... Oh shit, this bitch is weird as fuck. Is there someone else I can talk to? This fucking city is killing me. For some reason, he was wearing camo pants and a square necklace. And then I realized that Paul told him what to wear in the stakeout. A fucking idiot. I'm just doing my job. The belt was your fucking the eyes. You were know there for it. Oh, wonderful. That, I mean, that's just a mental image I like to go to sleep to every night. Arthur, fucking blow up doll. Perfect. Yeah, that's I mean, because that's when you're loose. That's when you're feeling it a little bit exactly. more. Exactly. So, as far as like inspirations for voices, like you're you're talking about inspirations that you had. Did anybody else have an inspiration for their voice in the show? Oh, for I know, I know for I know for me as Paul, I went I went to Robert. I'm like, I have to do a Southern accent, and, and I'm like, I have to do, and, and I'm like, I instantly thought about Ricky Bobby, yeah. Talladega Nights, <laughs> and in the first couple episodes, I would have Robert play a clip, yeah, of of um. What's what's the actor? Will Ferrell. Well, yeah. In Talladega Nights, just so I can get used to the voice. Yeah, because when I wrote that the script, I didn't. I never thought of him as a Southern character. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whatever. It works. Well, it was, I was like, Paul, that's fine. Paul is so adorable to me. Yeah. Like, yeah. like okay. he's the best. Like, oh, quick, quick. Oh, like, uh, let's, uh, Robert, give a quick rundown of who Paul Paul is. <laughs> like, oh okay. God. Yeah. Well, oh, okay, God. this one's gonna be kind of hard. Uh, I want to say it's that it's basically when I, comic relief. I'll start yeah, you off on that. He's, yeah. <laughs> well, you, you told me recently, like, you started off with the vision of Paul, like, originally, and then it just morphed into like he's just the guy that I give the best lines. Yeah. That's 
I, I like a lot of times when I write this, uh, these episodes, I, I'm like really tired and I, I do it on purpose because I come up with like really stupid shit <laughs> when I'm like tired. So a lot of times when I do that, I'll, I'll wait till I'm really tired, start writing like at midnight. And when I come up with something stupid, I always try to give it to Paul because <laughs> I love your straight man to yeah. him because you you just all you can say what like so many different times and it's always yeah, just funny totally like awful. the way you say it to him like whatever what? line he says you're just like really what Paul give like us a what what <laughs> you know that what comes from is Don Draper <laughs> like yeah. for the speaking the speaking voice is like I try to get Don Draper and then like the the voiceover is uh, Max Payne but I want to say that when Paul I mean essentially Paul's this character that like keys hasn't really talked to before the first episode in a while he used to be his partner on the force when keys got fired he went to the pi business so he hasn't talked to paul in a while but he 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 goes back to paul to with this case and asks him for help and stuff and i remember the first episode paul like he's very obnoxious but that's kind of how I wanted him to be. He's he's sexist. He's racist. JJ, he's you really pull up the obnoxious yeah. uh, really well. <laughs> I knew I would. Perfectly. I knew I would. Yeah. When, when when Robert said like this character is going to be annoying, I said this is the one I want. Like, that's what I want. <laughs> so like <laughs> I'm a natural. But it, it was funny because the first two episodes that I wrote, I remember Jonathan saying like I hate Paul. I hate Paul. <laughs> and you know what? I'm not the only one because as oh, it yeah. was starting to get released, nobody said anything about Paul at first. And then just around, like, episode four, that's when the comments from multiple people started coming in, like, I like Paul. Yeah. Paul's pretty funny. That's when you start to understand, like, you kind of get (laughs) who he is by that time. So you're like, okay, this guy. And then you're excited to hear him. Exactly. Now he's a fan favorite. Yeah, that's the thing is, like, I I knew from the get-go that he was going to be a fan favorite only because, like, I gave him (laughs) the the stupidest, yeah, (laughs) the dumbest things to say. And I remember that, like, I figured, like, at first he started off as just this sexist obnoxious kind of guy and then later on i kind of made it more childish like the things that he mm-hmm. says is just kind of like it's just so dumb and keith just puts up with it because he has to and but i think that works out great best paul line ever what if i poop in the corner and point at it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i was actually just about to say that like when i was recording that i just couldn't stop laughing what if i poop in the corner and point at it <laughs> Can't even read this line with a straight face. <laughs> like, you know how many? Do you know how many takes it took you to do that without laughing? It, like, yeah. t- and there's some lines that you've given me where I'm like, JJ didn't give me a good take. He's laughing through everything. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> speaking of, yeah, speaking of that, like there's there's lines like where I'll I'll start reading it, <laughs> and I'm like I like the, the like the hardest line in the whole series for me to get through was when he's he's with um um oh, what's her name. God, the, the, Angela. Angela. He's with Angela, and they're about to have sex. And he's like, um, he's like, he, it starts out like he's just talk, he's just describing her as like this beautiful woman, and, and he's like, there's something about her that just gives me the biggest boner. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, normally I'd be fine, but today we're with thin pants. Yeah, dude, you cracked <laughs> up in that. Stop. <laughs> there was something about her. I don't know what it was. There was something about her. I don't know if it was the flowing blonde hair, the way she walked, or the way she talked, but there was something about her that just gave me the biggest boner. Normally, I'd be fine today. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Are you serious? Uh. <laughs> oh, fuck. How am I going to do this? <clears throat> Normally, I'd be fine today, but I want my thing. <laughs> I needed to head out before she noticed. Luckily, we arrived at her house just in time. Holy shit. Oh my god. Composure. Composure. There was some. I don't know what it was, but there was something about her. I don't know whether if it was the flowing blonde hair, the way she walked, or the way she talked, but there was something about her that just gave me the <laughs> Oh. <laughs> All right, I'm in the keys mode. I'm in keys mode. Normally, I'd be fine, but today I wore my thin pants. 
Normally I'd be fine, but today I wore my thin pants. Because you say like, who th- says that? <laughs> because yeah, the thin pants. Like he has thin pants. Like fuck. Oh my god. Like was he getting dressed that morning? I'm like, hmm. thin pants. Thin, thin pants, pants or thick pants. I'm gonna see Angela today. I don't know. Well, no, it was funny though because like the way it starts off is like kind of how Kyle was saying. Like the way she walked, the way she talked, the way her hair flowed, and the breeze. He's like something just about her just gave me. And then there's like a pause, and it says the biggest boner. And when Kyle read through it, the first take, he goes, the biggest boner. And he keeps going, but then he just starts cracking up as he's reading the rest of the line. Yeah, it's funny. I don't read the scripts. And when I listened to that part, I was yeah. listening to my car. I laughed so loud. I think people heard me, like, outside the car. But I will say that actually my very line for Paul is when it's that in episode three where he says, Arthur, like, they're about to have this meeting about the sting. And he says, Arthur, you bring the files. I'll grab some beers. And Keys, you bring that sassy attitude. <laughs> <laughs> son of a bitch. But, <laughs> but he changes it up. He's like, you bring that attitude, you son of a bitch. Yeah. And, yeah. and then he's like, what attitude? And he's like, nice. <laughs> Honestly, my favorite interactions were probably between Keys and, uh, Keys and Paul. Like, yeah. they were just, like, going at each other the whole time. Yeah. But I think my second... Well, actually, it's a pretty close tie. Second interaction is between Keys and his assistant. Edith. Edith. Oh, yeah. Edith Absolutely. Amy. Yeah. Say hi. I know you've been sitting quietly. Just, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it amazing that you're shy during this? But I like, know, right? right? But she's like cursing up a storm and everything. Yeah. I know. Robert, don't judge me. Tell everybody about Edith. Edith is uh, Keys' secretary. Um, she has Edith a... Dietrich. She has, she, has a little, she has a little mouth on her, too. Yeah, she's, <laughs> that's what he describes her as. Uh, she... She has the voice of Judy Holiday and the mouth of a sailor. She has the voice of Judy Holiday and the mouth of a sailor, but she was good at what she did. The only thing is that she also kind of has this weird fascination with Keys, and you don't know if it's like she li- like is in love with him Ooh. or if she just likes him and wants to protect him. What do you think? What's what's really going on? Um, I think it's more of like the wants to protect, but possibly, you know kind of wants to be more than what she is. A lot of women are diminished to their roles, which are sometimes just housewives or maybe just <laughs> just a secretary. That's true. But alas. Alas. Well, yeah, don't alas. you play a secretary in this podcast? <laughs> um, yes, but, but, if you listen, <laughs> but if you listen to, to uh, the podcast, you'll see that the secretary actually saves his life more than probably anyone else in the entire yeah. series. Yeah, yeah she's Twice. probably kind of the, the whole... The, the linchpin behind the whole operation. Well, really. I wanted her to be like a, a stronger character too. I know early on yeah, she, she doesn't really is. have too much. She doesn't have too much going on. She is just her secretary, but it's like the build. yeah, it builds up and then eventually she becomes a more. She, she even drives a speedboat in the finale. Yeah, so. where did she learn that? <laughs> Spoiler alert: There's a <laughs> speedboat <laughs> chase. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know why. Like I was just like, eh, speedboat chase sounds Amy, fine. I do have to say that the voice of Edith is probably my favorite kind of voice out of everyone. Mm. Oh, yeah. Thanks. The first yeah. time I you heard did, it, yeah. You did a fantastic job. Thanks. Good morning, Mr. K. How you doing today? I'm good. How are you today, Edith? I'm fucking awful. My cat kept me up all last night. He was shitting all over the walls. I think he ate a bird or something, because there were shitty feathers everywhere. I could fucking kill him. I told him not to eat no goddamn birds. Where did you get the inspiration for the voice of Edith? Okay. It's a lot of things rolled into one. Right. Um, Robert, obviously I read that I'm supposed to sound kind of like Judy Holiday, And he also told me to be like Harley Quinn, yeah. which being who I am, I'm obsessed with like 90s pop culture. So mm-hmm. I automatically thought of my favorite Batman cartoon from the 90s. Of course. Yeah. And um, I'm from the North. I'm from New Jersey. So I gave a little bit of like a Jersey, New York accent, but not too much that I had to really keep it the whole time. So it's kind of more of like the Judy Holiday thing again. You know how like old Hollywood had like that nasally voice. I don't know. It just sounded like it was really high pitched. Yeah. Well, so I just kind of did that. Yeah. Oh, I think you will agree with me to say that Edith, she, uh, she's a little bit headstrong, right? Is that a bad thing? <laughs> yeah. Did you, nah. uh, now did you, what did you, uh, what did you try to bring to like uh, to the table as far as Edith? Like that wasn't kind of on the script, basically. Well, I feel like she really. I didn't want her to be like um, like a Paul, but she needed to, I think, stand out more because the female characters are kind of just stereotypical female characters. Right. Yeah. And with my personality as who I am, I was like, well, I need to really make this character come to life. I don't want it to just be like what's on the page. And, right. I mean, Robert's direction really helped, though, because 
I don't know what the heck I was doing. I only read my lines. I didn't read any of the other stuff. So yeah. I just kind of skimmed it. But As you, you said, you didn't like like how it turned out in some of the episodes, but I think it turned well, out great. Thanks. I, I, mean, I don't think I don't. I don't think any of us did though. I think I I critique myself. Is that self conscious? I, I, mean, I never do that though. That's the thing. Wait, I, so I only do this now. So this is the first time I'm hearing. And that's a direct slight against me as the editor. I'm kidding. Whoa. <laughs> I'm kidding. Whoa. whoa. Well, you around. know what? No, you might not know this, but like I, when I first heard episode one, I heard, when I heard your voice, I'm like, holy shit, I got to do the monologue over again because like there's no, there's no fucking good. way I can right. like compete against this with that <laughs> shitty opening monologue I just did. So there, there were time or there were episodes that you weren't um, pleased with, uh, I guess, the way Edith was in the episode or no no no, no. Like just her um, voice acting yeah I felt oh, like I felt like my lines I wish I would have like right now for the people listening this is literally my first time with anyone that else that was on the podcast recording something mm -hmm. and oh, I've yeah. only met all of them like a handful of times before so I didn't really know you know what was going on I didn't really know them and it was really cool to kind of listen every week. And then be like, oh, I kind of wish I did that better. Now that I know who I'm working with, it's yeah. like because yeah. I know how it's supposed to sound together. But um, are we exactly how you imagined us? Um, <laughs> better actually. <laughs> Rather impressed. I think that is like I mean that is kind of a hard thing where we record everybody's lines separate. Mm -hmm. yeah. We don't record in. I mean, we have we have this studio, but it's not. It's not where we all get together because of our schedules that, like, it's hard to get everybody together to record, to, like, at the yeah. same time. So we record everybody separate. So the mashup between lines sometimes doesn't always seem like it, f it fits. That's why we record multiple mm -hmm. takes. Right. And that way we try to find the best fit for that, that character. But th I think the editing, I don't know if it's specifically because Kyle and JJ know each other so well. I don't know if they know each other well. But yeah. they it might just be their acting skills <laughs> or the editing skills. But th all of their lines are like, they just sound so fluid and perfect. Like it was like meant to be. I really, that's like my favorite part of every single case or episode or podcast is just their interactions. Everyone else, you know, they're great too. But I feel like the keys and... I mean, Mr. K and the yeah. uh, Paul really flow <laughs> well compared to everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> that's credit. That's credit to Jonathan. Man. That's credit. Big that's credit to Jonathan. Jonathan <laughs> does a, a, fa a fantastic yes. job editing all that together he and does. making it sound like it's a it's a natural interaction. Oh, you, you can get your lips off my cock now. <laughs> oh, yeah. no, never. No. Um, <laughs> Jonathan, I think uh, you said something not on the podcast, but you mentioned that you know as the uh, the season went on you uh, became more comfortable in, in the editing process. Oh, yeah. Like, do you need to kind of take us through, like, do that a little bit? Well, yeah, I um, I remember it was the, I think it was the same week that Robert said, all right, I got all the voices for episode one. I couldn't wait to get into it. I just, I dove head first into it. I mean, I knew what I was doing as far as, like, editing audio goes, but as far as, like, blending uh, voices together to make it sound like one conversation, um, comedic timing, I had to, all of a sudden start thinking about Which that. Which is really important. That I, oh, I, that's not, that doesn't exist in music. Right, right. You know, um, so, but there would be like a lot of times, you know, I, I swung a lot, I missed a lot, but I hit a lot of home runs too. Yeah. Um, but there was like a lot of times where like JJ would give me a line for Paul and he would read it too quickly to be what the, what the line needed to be. Mm. So, I mean, to find those like good cut points and then edit them out, could give a good amount of time dead air mm -hmm. drop the music out at specific spots you know well, things sometimes like that. if you take like like paul can say a line and then if you take like a uh, one second pause before keys responds or you take a three second pause before he responds it can it the comedic timing is like yeah it can change drastically and you know the, the, those are things i I've, i never even would ever consider until i started this project but one thing i do want to bring up <laughs> yeah, they're sharing champagne. Just, uh, sharing champagne. Amy and JJ over here. <laughs> Sorry. Just sharing, we all have champagne right now. Uh, but one thing I do want to say is that I remember I got the, I don't know whether it was the first 10 minutes or the whole first episode done. And I, everybody kind of listened to it on their own time. But I remember specifically when Robert came it was over. The first it was the whole first episode. Yeah. I remember this. Robert came over, and this was the first time he ever heard it. I mean, you were working on writing it. I'm sure you had the idea in your head or you had some sort of vision for it. And the first time, I mean, the season opens up with a cop car kind of coming in the distance. like, yeah. And then it passes by you. And then so all of a sudden, then the music comes in, that jazzy music. 
with the internal dialogue. I remember looking at you exactly when the cop car passed and then the music dropped in. Mm -hmm. You had like one of those like uncontrolled smiles on your face. And, <laughs> yeah. and that's when I knew it was like, all, all right, right, we're on the same page. We got it. We got Honestly, it. I was expecting to hear like, like a line of dialogue, one noise, a line of dialogue, one noise. Not like all this over like... You know, over layered stuff, yeah, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so which want, was, so that's which good. is you I'm glad, but it was just yeah, it was better than I expected. Well, and 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 one thing too is, oh, fucking Robert, you gave me a, <laughs> you gave me some goddamn curveballs. I'm gonna say that. I remember there's been a lot, at least twenty times where I'm sitting at this, I'm sitting in the editing bay and I'm reading the script. And I'm like. How the fuck am I going to launch a boat off of a fucking ramp, have it go through the air, crash into Doppel Avenue, into a bus and explode, and then two bodies are flying out of the boat onto a street? No, the, the text message was, after that uh, episode 11 sex scene, like, I want to quit the show. Or, like, oh I want to quit God. the show. Oh, yeah. How many times have I quit Dude, after the sex scene? Dude, I think the restaurant scene was your first time, the That's Italian restaurant, where you were like, I don't think I can do this anymore. <laughs> Obviously, I said it, I said it jokingly. Yeah. But, um, but that sex scene, you were like, oh, how yeah. am I going to? do this no, the second sex the food sex scene the food sex scene I, after which I got, is amazing by the way yeah that was awesome after yeah. i got done with that scene i was like this is what my fucking college degree is amounted <laughs> to this is what i spent all this money on well, let well me tell you, the money spent let me tell you how far you've come as an editor uh i remember episode one i fought so hard because i hated that song and the, there was a there was a jazz there's an instrumental jazz theme in the first episode and i fucking hated it and i like yeah. every time i heard it i was like man i've heard this in every Every little, every every stock song, I've heard this so many times. And then by the last episode, the the last scene of that last episode, that that music that comes in at the end, I'm, it's like, oh, I get choked up. I'm like, oh, it's perfect. <laughs> yes, it's so good. I, dude, I remember that too. Dude, the finale like turned out great. Yeah, like, it, the whole thing. Well, you know, Kyle, after hearing it for the first time, he's like, this plays like a movie. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. it's awesome. Yeah, I I actually. Not to be like a Debbie Downer. I just listened to it before I got here. Yep. And I listened to it on my Apple TV. Not to plug Apple or anything, but <laughs> That's okay. very I'm high tech. Apple.com. Um, <laughs> but I was listening to it and um, it just sounded so good. Like I was laying on my couch with my eye, eyes closed, like picturing everything. Yeah. And sorry to admit, but you guys, uh, Mr. Keys and Paul, don't look anything like. What you really look like. That's okay. <laughs> Robert, That's Robert I will, I'll keep in that in my character. mind. Wait, wait, wait. I, I want to say, yeah, one thing. I do, like, I did give him the fat character. He always gives me the fat Listen, character. It just nice. turned out that way, okay? I don't do it on purpose. But I will say that so for some reason, everyone thinks you're black. What? Yeah, everybody, what? Everybody, everybody I've thinks never, you're black. Yeah, everyone thinks no, I'm black? I don't, I, didn't, I didn't see that at all. I saw him as like a classic middle aged, like 40 year old guy with jeans that are really high waisted, a plaid shirt. Yep. Yeah. So, John with Goodman, like, basically. Yeah, yeah, John. Yeah, no, no, no but not overweight, with... though. Not overweight. I see him like tall and skinny. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, really? So he's, yeah. He's definitely, I, I when I think of like, guy. when I think of like southern country guys, well, I think of like that classic like 1940s, 1950s like cowboy, and they're like really slender with super, super, super high jeans. That's you. Paul to me, Paul to me is like, is that except except you know bigger and with like the white. You know how like um, when old people wear hats and like they have the white hair, the white comb yes. hair, and they take it off. It's like it's like sweated to their head. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's, that's what I see. Yeah. Paul, that's what I see. Yeah. That yeah. Describe JJ to a team. Wow. <laughs> yep. Wow. I, I, I did not know all these feelings for Paul. JJ's a very attractive man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I just never. Yeah. I I never got the the whole black thing. I mean, I don't care. I never but it's just I kind don't. of like a weird. I was like, oh, okay, Every, sure. If people think that, that's yeah. And then I'll I'll, I'll show I'll show them Jose in real life, and then I'm like, no. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what, what do you want me? To, what, that's you Paul. a random black you know, guy. That's how you know you're good, though. Mm -hmm. If you sound like what you don't look like, yeah. then you're you're good at what you yeah, do. Yeah, right. perfect. I'm okay with that. So yeah, guys, I, I think uh, some of you might have already mentioned it already, but I'll ask anyway. I want everybody to, to kind of pick like what was their favorite moment of the season. Um, I, I have mine. Yeah. It was it was actually during a recording, and there's a line where it says Paul's confused <laughs> oh, in the yeah, line, this is awesome. but I didn't read that. I only read my line, and I was genuinely confused, and Robert <laughs> couldn't stop laughing because it was like, there's no truck robots? <laughs> yeah. that's a, is that the and take I used? Yeah. yeah. And I was like, what? I was like, in my head, I'm like so confused, and Robert couldn't stop laughing because he... He realized that I was actually confused. Because he, the line is, there's more than meets the eye. And he says, no, there's no truck robots. <laughs> like, but he said that because he was like, and as he's saying it, he's like, 
<laughs> what? <laughs> and I'm like, and then he's like, realizes like, oh, I'm supposed to be confused. That works out great. <laughs> Is that the take I used? I think I so. I don't remember. I think so. I don't know. No, there's no truck robots. Good. It was, it was definitely funny. Though. I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> there, well, there was another similar moment when uh, Terrence O'Reilly. <laughs> How many? Okay, I know you got the inspiration for one of the O'Reilly children out of this incident because DJ, who reads for Terrence O'Reilly and Vendel, mm-hmm. um, he's acting out this scene like C three PO in Episode One, and he he's supposed to be oh, yeah. oh, yeah. expressing yeah. Like, jumping on the yeah, jumping on the table, and you have like little action sounds in there. Yeah, one of them being like percur, like percur, right? <laughs> like something, and he just I used it too. I used it in the episode where he goes burger. Parker, Parker. Yeah, he does Yeah, I was thinking more of like a gun sound, like a Parker, like that kind of thing. But he just read it Parker, so I'm like, whatever. <laughs> that, thought, and then when I asked you about it, I'm like, is that like some like Irish saying or something? Like, yeah, yeah. Parker. No, he just fucked up. He does that again in episode twelve. He see, he calls him Joffrey. Oh, <laughs> Joffrey, yeah. Yeah. Joffrey, O'Reilly. Joffrey O'Reilly. I, man. He's, the, he's the real deal. See, my favorite was you used one of his outtakes where he couldn't get this line right, and he kept reading it and reading it, and he just goes like, "Fuck me in the ass." And you actually put that into the, the <laughs> thing where, like, he actually gets, like, uh, Angela shows up behind him with the gun, and then yeah. she's like, drop your gun, Vendel, and he, like, drops it, and he's like, oh, fuck me in the ass. <laughs> like, you actually use that take. I thought that was awesome. Hey, anything you give me is free game. See, that man listens, and you should, too. Who are you? She's a pistol, that one, Vendel. I'd do what she says. Oh, fuck me in the ass. Thanks for your, uh... Cooperation. Um, in terms of favorite scene, I hate to I hate to be the one to to do this, but I mean the that final scene in episode twelve was my favorite scene. That, mm-hmm. The final scene with Chris Gore and and Nick and I is is oh yeah. Favorite. Shout out real quick to Chris Chris Gore. For, yeah, we actually yeah. just uh, yeah. It was really cool of him to contribute the voice, and we appreciate that. A and lot. that was a whole deal <laughs> in yeah. and of itself. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to get into that? Yeah. Let's get into it. Um, I I reached out to Chris Gore. Uh, on he does this, he does an epi- or he does a podcast called Pod Crash, and he was I noticed he was promoting it, so I was like, hey, Chris, crash our podcast, and I I tweeted it. I think on my personal account, and then. Uh, no, no, no. I tweeted on the Shark Dropper account and then favorited it and kind of replied on my personal account so it would show up in his notifications. And then here's a direct message from Chris Gore. I said, sure, let's do it. So I was like, guys, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Look what I got. <laughs> Chris Gore wants to be on our podcast. So Robert, we, we, we decide. We're like, okay, what what, what role are we going to give Chris Gore? Dude, I have to say that when you told me that, I didn't have episode 12 written yet. And I knew Good it was going to be a longer episode. So I was like – all right, what can we give him? And then that's when I, I figured out the whole Desmond Grant thing. Mm-hmm. Spoiler alert. De- <laughs> oh, they've already heard I, it. By I've the time already heard it. Yeah. I know. I just like saying that. Um, so like, I was like, all right, maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll turn the whole Desmond Grant thing into more – give him like some lines to chew on and like actually give him like a four-page kind of scene where I wasn't going to really do that before. So when, when you told me you got Chris Gore, I was like, all right, well, I got to get this finale done. Because mm-hmm. you also were like, yeah, we'll have it to you by Tuesday. So I'm like – all right, oh, got to do right. it. <laughs> got to write this. I well, I, I thought you had more of it done. I yeah, I, I think, like I said, I was going to start it like over the weekend, and I didn't, I didn't have time because I was like working so much. And then Sunday came along, and I had Sunday and Monday off, so I actually like just sat in my room for two days and like just That's got impressive it out. that yeah. you write an episode that mm. fast. Just like pushed it out, and it was like a long episode too. So this yeah. happened in what September? It was early October. Early October. It was like just like. Probably October first or second, and we yeah. give him a date of what? October twentieth. October twentieth, and he's he's like, "Well, give us a date." And he's, October twentieth. So October twentieth comes rolling around, and we're like, "Hey, man, <laughs> 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 what's going on?" And he's like, "Oh, dude, I was he I, I had seen on his Twitter that he was doing he was hosting some kind of a con earlier and he, like with Stanley or something, and he was he was doing hosting duties with that. So like, okay, fine. He's like, "What's your drop dead date?" I said, "Our drop dead date is November fifth. November fifth is our date." He's like, "Okay, just remind me before beforehand." So it's like, "Okay, fine." And so like Halloween comes rolling around, uh, the the three of us hang out. We're like, "Let's you know." I I remind him twice that weekend. November comes and goes. No, or November fifth comes and goes. No Nothing. response from Chris Gore. So at this point we're like, fuck, it's not gonna happen. Like it's definitely not gonna happen. Then that that weekend, he he does keep in touch with us. He does like keep responding to us. Like, yeah, oh, he's not ignoring us. Yeah, yeah, he's like, oh man, this week has been hell for me. Like I really, I'll get it to you this weekend. I'll get it to you this weekend. I'm like, okay, 
perfect. So, and, and by this time, Jonathan's like, fuck this guy. <laughs> well, Jonathan's just like, no, I'm going to record. I'm going to record for that role because we have to release. Yeah. So yeah. he's like, I'm going to record for Desmond Grant. And if Chris Gore doesn't get it to us by Tuesday, which was our release date, if he mm-hmm. doesn't get it to us by then, then I'm going to, I'm going to. So, yeah, I mean, there is, there is an episode out there where there is another Desmond Grant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Recorded. You were thinking logically in that, okay, we have to have a contingency plan, which is, of course. Right. You, you know, I will say it was definitely worth the wait. Because Chris definitely yeah. knocked it out of the park. I yeah, mean, the yeah. thing that happened is uh, what happened is like that weekend comes and goes. Yeah, Jonathan records it. They have we have our production meeting, and like at like after the production meeting, it's it's good to go. It's out. It's we're done. We signed off on we it. We signed off on it. Yep. I I was I was at work the, yeah. the day of release and on my lunch hour. So this is probably about twelve thirty or something. All of a sudden, I check the email. I sh- check the Shark Dropper email, and it's Chris Gore. Hey. Just sent you the audio file. Yeah. It's under Chris. Have fun. I saw that. I saw that Tuesday morning. I was like, oh, shit. And I'm like, I'm Tuesday like, morning, we released Wednesday. And I was like, no, we released I was, Tuesday night. Tuesday it was night, like, yeah. When we were, yeah. By this time, I've been editing the finale for four or five weeks in a row. Yeah. I mean, I was just fucking, oh, I was so tired of editing this goddamn finale. Right. And I was so looking forward to it. I'm like, okay, good. All I have to do is put the bumpers on it. I'm just going to listen to it one more time, make sure everything's good, then release. Yeah. Easy Tuesday night. Yeah. And then that shit happens. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, fuck it. Yeah. There it goes. Fucking four hours my Tuesday night. You like text me. You're like, tell me if it's good. And then I'm going to come home and edit it. And I, I, I remember I was like at work and I was trying to like download it onto my phone. It was taking so long. I'm like, come on. I just want to see if this is good. And we heard it in the takes. I'm like, yeah, it's good. You're going to have to do it. Yeah. So, so, yeah, I mean, there, there's a little bit of trivia. Uh, Chris Core wasn't edited in until about hours. 40, 45 minutes before the release. Yeah. Desmond fucking Grant. How did you know my middle name? Here I was, trying to prove your innocence. So you two, together. That's right. Now drop your gun. But how? (laughs) You think I'm gonna fall for that old villain routine? Explain how I did everything just so you can escape and then arrest me with the knowledge that I so willingly gave you. I should also mention that Jonathan's version of Desmond Grant was also really, really well done. It was like a different take, yeah. It yeah, was it was, it was very, very more Bond villainy. Yeah, more well spoken. When Bond. I first when I first heard it, I I felt comfortable releasing the episode as is about Chris Gore because I felt you did a really good job with Desmond Grant. Yeah, I appreciate right? that. All right. So, does anybody else have any uh, favorite moments? I mean, that okay, that last moment. When that music kicks in, when he realizes that it's the Angela's card. gift, yeah, yeah. yeah editing it, editing it, I was like, oh, fuck. it's getting dusty in here. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ! Dude, are you you really did a great job yeah. just kind of slowing the pace down because up until that mo- moment, it was just like kind of like a crazy. like it was just like a really fast paced, mm-hmm. like really high action episode. But once you got to that final emotional scene, you know, you were pitch perfect with uh, the pacing. You slowed it down. It just kind of amplified the emotional intensity of that scene. Yeah, I it needed it. Yeah. That's when I noticed it. My finger felt way too snug in the trigger guard. I hadn't noticed it before. I pulled out Angela's gift, the gun-shaped lighter. A huge grin was plastered on Desmond's face. Well, this was it. He held up his gun, pointed it at my chest and fired. <laughs> didn't quite hurt. It was more of a shock. I could feel the bullet enter my body. I slowly fell to my knees. Good job, It was actually a pretty, it was a pretty good scene. I'm not going to lie. The whole emotional part of it. And the only part, like, I actually didn't like this part, but I still laughed at it. Yeah. Was when Paul was like, Jimmy (laughs) Jones, let me just go get this right here. And he like, takes his wallet. And I'm like, oh, fuck, Paul. Like, (laughs) It was like, just like I, I read the line. I still like why, like why. <laughs> it was just like one last Paulism. Yeah. <laughs> like, let me just get this. <laughs> Honestly, like that's because that's how I saw. It. I always saw it as like I remember Jonathan saying like I see like you know eighty percent comedy, twenty percent real drama and stuff, and and that's essentially what we what we do. But I figure like because it's mostly comedy, I wanted to end like mm-hmm. obviously it's a dramatic ending, but I had to end on like one more joke, and I figured like. Why not have Paul just be an asshole and fucking <laughs> take some money out of his wallet when he's dying? Why deviate from character now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can't just have him sit there. So I thought that was pretty cool. 
I, I don't know. I, I got to say, like, in, in general, when I, I write an episode, there are, like, scenes that I go through that, like, I, I sometimes I come up with a scene first before I even start writing the episode. And when I come up with a scene, I'm like, is this going to be hard for Jonathan to edit? Or yes. is this going to be, like, <laughs> yeah. like is this going to be hard to record for? But I'm like, eh, whatever. Fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> just going to write <laughs> it anyway. And we'll just see what happens. So I write a script and I hand it to you and I'm like, Let's see what happens. And you set your egg timer. You're like, it's yep. done. <laughs> I mean, you can't say, wait to listen. <laughs> or you say the same thing to me when, like, I um, I open up a script and there's a there's a full like page and a half of dialogue or a voiceover. I'm like, fuck me, like those, those <laughs> dude. Kyle, I you think, had like the worst job because yeah, you I had did, uh, yeah, dialogue. You, you had so you had to do much. really yeah. long takes every yeah. time. Well, when I write when I write one of those, like not even that. It's like I remember when people record and they'll try saying like one of my lines or something, and like I don't know if it's just a dumb line or it's just hard for them to say. They're just like, oh, this this is difficult, and I'm like, I don't have to say it, so sorry. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just writing it. Sometimes Hope you guys when, do it. <laughs> when I read them, I see like typos, and I'm yeah. like, a, I'm like a grammar obsessed person, so I'm like, I can't say this, and then I have to like write it correctly or add the apostrophe. Add well, yeah, you're yeah. a secretary. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. come on. Take that um, Robert. I also <laughs> I just remembered my favorite besides the the finale. Um, it's totally not like heartfelt and sad. It's actually the overkill scene. Which, um, <laughs> not to play favorites, but um, I'm in it. and um, it's You're Paul more than just Keith. in it. You are like, <laughs> yeah. you but, um, are it. Listening to that scene, like, it just does not end. And I just laughed the entire time. Because, I mean, when, when I recorded it, I just, I didn't even read the other lines. I just read my lines. So I didn't know what I was getting myself into. And then hearing it, like, the over-the-top sound effects, I was like, oh, my gosh, this is so pretty. One of my right. favorite Why? lines is in that episode by Amy where she says, uh, like, she's, they're chopping up the guy's body. <laughs> like it's in episode eight. They like murder this guy, but they don't just murder him. They're worried that he's gonna come back to life, so they just keep murdering him. Like they keep just chopping him in a mulch. And I remember like Paul comes up and he's like, "You're not even doing it right." And then he's like, "You didn't even sever his foot from his leg." And she goes, "Yeah, we didn't even do that." <laughs> like, just... Guys, come on, he's dead. Look, he's not coming back to life. But you didn't sever his foot from his leg. Yeah, Mr. K, we didn't even do that. No. Guys, really. <laughs> I love like the way she says that. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah. Hey, I like, do that. I like when uh, my favorite line in that is when Kyle was like and she chopped his fucking head off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, it's like finally. Like, finally. The yeah. thing about Paul, Paul's the worst cop. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, like, he sees, he sees a murder happening in front of him. He's like, fuck it, I'll join in. <laughs> like, the got... last episode, he's doing coke. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yeah, you're on coke. I'm like, what? I don't even know how to be on coke. So I drank, I drank a cup of coffee yeah, like, that's before that thing. episode so I can get, like, really hyper. Nice. Yeah. I remember, uh, yeah, because we added that line, like, that paragraph of dialogue. I was just like, just read it as fast as you can, and if you mess it up, just keep going. And that's what he did. He just kept writing. And there's, like, a part where, like, a couple parts where you stutter, but it, like, works out it's perfectly. Perfect. perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I think like uh, um, even the part where like you're doing the stakeout on Angela's husband and you're like talking about like how the guy like you're watching this guy and he's meeting with this other guy and he's obviously gay but you like can't <laughs> figure it out and Keys is the whole time is like are you serious <laughs> like like you're just like what and you at one point you want to shoot him you're like this guy's stealing a coffee so you pull out your gun Keys is like don't pull out your gun and then like at the very end you both at, simultaneously like Keys is like. Obviously, he's a and he says like a homosexual. homosexual, and you say a Democrat, and you're just, like, <laughs> it's just so like off the wall. Like I just thought that was awesome. A Democrat. Yeah. Well, I do want to speak one more thing to that uh, overkill scene. I did. I did have a listener who she got a hungry Howie's pizza. <laughs> That's the first mistake. And started started the episode. <laughs> Shout out to Hungry Howie's. <laughs> Hungry Howie's. Shout out to Hungry Howie's. <laughs> started the episode. Started the pizza. She got two pizza, two slices done by the time that scene started. Yeah. She started the third and was like, "I'm gonna throw up." Yeah. <laughs> and it was a lot of mushy. Was that from oh. the podcast or just from the pizza? Yeah, <laughs> yeah a little yeah, bit of both. Oh, uh, well, shout out to our sponsor. Hungry Howie's is solid, man. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Dude, Little Caesars all the way. All right. Sorry, oh, Little Caesars. Right. Sorry. Everyone, get out of here. All right. Well, uh. <laughs> Why don't we take a break real quick, right? We'll listen to some messages, and we'll be – when we come back, we'll uh, talk about the feature of Dalpa Avenue Hurt. But, uh, yeah, enjoy these messages. <laughs> Resident Evil, Bioshock, The Last of Us, Silent Hill. What do those all have in common, John? Games that you still have not given back to me. Well, you wanted those back? Well, yeah. They're no good. What are you using those games for? Well, I'm part of this podcast, John, and so are you. 
What's the podcast called? It's called Horror Play. Should what do we do that? in Horror Play? Well, we rate games. We play them. We rate them. We stream them sometimes. Oh, wow. Where can I find this podcast? A uh, little website. www.sharkdropper.com If I check it out, will you give those games back to me? No. Oh. Greetings, podcast listeners. My name is Kyle. I am Nick. And we're here to talk to you about a little podcast that we like to call Word of the Bay. And you might ask yourself, what is Word of the Bay? Well, God damn it, I'll tell you. Word of the Bay is oh, a... thank God. <laughs> Word of the Bay is a podcast where we talk about sports. What kind of sports? Tampa Bay sports. Tampa Bay sports. Only Tampa Bay. Only Tampa Bay. Bucks. Lightning. Rays. Rays. Maybe a, maybe another bay. Yeah. Somewhere oh, in there. That was a good nap. What are you guys doing in here? Oh! oh yeah, I forgot he was in here. Shit. Um. Yeah. There's Green Bay. Jonathan. Wait. Are we recording a podcast is, right now? No. You're awkward. fine. Don't just go back to sleep. Yeah. Go We're back good. to sleep, man. We don't. It's fine. It's cool. We're the Bay. Go to SharkDropper.com. Hey, podcast listeners. Robert here, along with Kyle. What's up? And John. Hey. We're here to talk to you about a little podcast that we do called Shark Dropper. Yeah. What do we talk about in Shark Dropper? Oh, all kinds of things. Kyle, name one of them. Oh, jeez. Walking across America. John, name another. Ooh, video games. No, we never talk about that. Yeah, that's oh, stupid. So if you want to listen to Shark Dropper, don't listen for the video we game We talked about talk. video games last week. You know what? No. Just don't listen to John at all. John, okay. just don't listen to him talk. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, a good, that's a good rule of thumb. But if you want to listen to me and Kyle talk, along with John intermittently, but really don't listen to that part. Hi, guys. Go, go, go visit SharkDropper.com because you can find everything there. All right, and we're back. We got uh, a few more drinks in us. We're now wearing our camo pants. We got our square necklaces on. <laughs> yep. And, uh, Robert, what is a square necklace? I think that's the reason why everybody's tuning into this podcast. That's a question on everybody. What is a square yeah, that necklace? That is the biggest question of Double Avenue Hurt. Yeah. Not did James Key survive. Right. It's more of what is a square necklace. And honestly, yeah. I don't know. It just sounded good when I wrote it. <laughs> yeah. knows. Yeah. I know when you wrote like... And then a square necklace jingled. I'm like, <laughs> let me just Google that. <laughs> For sound effects. Yeah. On a square necklace, that I, MP3. I, I Googled it after I wrote it, and I just wanted to see what I came up with. And it was just like, it just showed a bunch of different things. I'm like, eh, whatever. I'm keeping it. It worked. <laughs> it worked. All yeah. right. So we talked about the past, right? The present. Let's talk about the future Ooh. of Delta Avenue Hurt. Interesting. Future. What do you guys see? Doppel Avenue hurt going in your mind. Starting with who? Starting with anybody but you, Robert. Okay. <laughs> JJ. What do you think? Oh, okay. Well, I don't know anything about the future of Doppel Avenue hurt, but I, I would hope that Key, uh, Key survives. Right. Because I love him. <laughs> because he's one of my favorite characters. This is JJ talking, not Paul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. He still owes me money. <laughs> yeah. But I actually just found out some interesting things about my wife. And so, <laughs> no, I, I really like, I don't know. I hope he just, I hope Keys gets another big case and we just have another mm. Doppel Avenue hurt, another season of just awesome action. I just want, I just want more Keys, Paul interactions. You guys just <laughs> yeah. want more royalty checks. Shut up. Yeah. 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 But um, to add on to what he said, um, I agree with that, but I feel like in between there should be a break. And I know that Robert had an idea for like mini episodes that mm. focus on side characters. I think that'd be really interesting. Like right before season two starts. Right. Yeah. Like kind of like as a teaser. Yeah. Cause mm. obviously Paul needs like, we, we got to find out what he got Rebecca. That's, that's all I care about. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's Little touches Rebecca. me. What, what did Not I buy her? Size, what did I buy her? A life size standee of Millard Fillmore. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I don't even know who Millard Fillmore is. <laughs> maybe, but I just, I maybe, just he, the maybe he bought her a square necklace. Go. Ooh, a square necklace would be good. Yeah. I got to get her a good gift, though, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they were really worried about that. Hey, she might be a demon. Maybe. <laughs> that whole yeah, possessed she's thing probably is like hilarious. Demon. Like, yeah. yeah, I own her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you go with the possession again. <laughs> Amy. Again with the possession. <laughs> yeah, of course I own her. <laughs> Amy, where do you, uh, where do you want, uh, where do you see Edith going? Oh, yeah. I, did, I wanted to get your take on this, too. Yeah. 
What is it? What do you what do you see between the relationship of Edith and Keys? I have an interesting thing in this. As if well. there is going like, to be a relationship, I feel like um, either she just kind of totally gets written off, not to like kill myself, but I don't want it to That's be too wants. overbearing. So it's like either I feel like in the beginning of like season two, something like drastic happens. She tries to save him, and then he actually tries to save her because that yeah. never happens. Yeah, and then uh, she ends up dying. Huh? Or oh. or they can be equals and she can be promoted to be like his helper. I want a love Not triangle. Me, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I want a love triangle, triangle between Edith. Yeah. JJ, you just want... She wants a bigger part. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll write it in. I well, see, uh, oh, go ahead, I see Keys and, e and Edith being somewhat like Jim and Pam or like Diane and Sam. Or is it Sam and, and Cheers? Sam and Diane. Oh, Sam yeah. and Diane. Mm -hmm. and Jim and Pam. I, I see them yeah. being that in, uh, throughout again, the course of the series. On again, off again. That's kind of what I see for them. I do hope we get to see more character development in regards to Edith. Like, mm -hmm. I want to know more about her backstory. Absolutely. Like, yeah. uh, more about, like, uh, what does she do, like, when she's not, you know, at the office, you right? Know, when she's right. not threatening well, that's people what we, with the, pickaxes. And that's what uh, Amy was talking about, is I think we are going to do, it's just kind of like mm -hmm. some short side like story stuff. Ones. Yeah, like, they don't have to be crazy. long. They can just be short side stories of, like, some of the side characters. Maybe stuff that happened during season one when you didn't see them. Mm -hmm. uh, very George R.R. R. Martin of us. I like yeah. that. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I want this to turn into Game of Thrones. A main character dies every season. Right. <laughs> yep. So, Keys is <laughs> Yep. Speaking Double of Keys. Avenue Hurt. He's the Sean Bean of Double Avenue Hurt. <laughs> oh, no. Spoiler alert. Kyle, I yes. know you've got a lot of ideas. Where do you... Uh, where do you hope to see uh, Keys uh... alive? Hopefully, yeah. Well, obviously, <laughs> I, I, assuming I he is alive. Keys. But we're like, uh, where do you, uh, where do you hope Keys kind of goes in the future? <laughs> you know, the, there's a lot of things that in that in that opening monologue, a lot of things that that aren't fully fleshed out in the first season. Um, mainly like his his ex wife, the 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 incident, quote unquote. They kind of get into it a little bit with Arthur um, towards the towards the end. I'd like to see some of that fleshed out. I'd like to see maybe, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to see him take on a different kind of case, not necessarily a, a murder. Maybe like maybe a murder or different different circumstances behind a murder. And I'd like to see, you know, the 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 whole dynamic with him and Edith. I think that I think that that last scene, that scene with him and Edith, where she wraps his arms around him, I thought that was like that was adorable. Like I was like, oh. So you uh, you just want more moments where Keys just kind of exposes like. The more, the more reserved side of himself that he tries to keep guarded. The basically. character development. Yeah. <laughs> now, Jonathan, oh as God. the uh, as the editor of Doppel Avenue Hurt, yes, sir. Where do you, like, where do you uh, see Doppel Avenue Hurt going? Where do you want it to go? Like, well, a, a, as editing wise, yeah, as, just like whatever. As we were um, discussing, we I want to do the final. Or, I'm sorry, the the side episodes, but I want to do them not just like single episodes. I want to do like if we're going to give Edith a backstory. Yeah, I want to have her, you know, like a three week, three episode little thing. So you yeah. know, it's kind of like a mini Doppel Avenue Hurt kind mm -hmm. of thing. You know, we can follow Edith, we can follow Arthur, we can follow Paul, all those sort of things. Right. Um, but what I would really like to see is if you take the production value. From episode one and compared to episode 11, you know, 10, 11, or 12, you can tell a very significant difference. And that's not to say episode one was bad. It's still no, very no. good. Yeah, yeah. But, but when you go back and listen to it, it's, it's very, I don't want to say fun because I am so self critical and I am a perfectionist. But when you do listen to those early episodes, you do get a sense of how much. The production value has changed. Well, you, you know what it is, Jonathan. I think it's it's when you watch a TV show. You see, if you watch episode one of Seinfeld, oh, you yeah. see how how much different it is from you know the later episodes. Right. Yeah, you could. Put, I I want to say that you probably hit your stride editing wise, like after like maybe like three or four episodes. Really. Yeah. When it really when it really hit its stride was I, I want to say like episode eight is during that overkill scene. Right. See, I think episode yeah. four. I think episode four is when like all the characters were developed and like and it started hitting its stride. What was four? Four was the, the stakeout. The stakeout. Yeah, yeah I, would, I would agree no, with Robert. Four was. What was four? Four was that, uh, the first time Angela and him have sex. That was the ending of it. Yeah, it was the sting. Was, it was the sting. Yeah, the scarface sting. sting. Okay, yeah, so yeah, that, I, I would agree with Robert. I think yeah, I think around episode four is really where really, like we hit the stride. <laughs> scarface. Yeah. Come on, so, I know, right? I think what you're what you're, you're going to see more of that um, high production value, more emotional music to kind of bring you in more. 
Um, I do want to keep that pacing, though, where it right. is kind of like a slow burn through the entire entire se- season and then just sort of that little arching effect in the last four or three episodes where you start – when he starts figuring out and unfurthing what the case actually is and all of a sudden it, – it's almost like I have to edit the episodes and edit the music around him to kind of his mindset where all of a sudden he's starting to discover stuff and then all of a sudden mm-hmm. the music starts expanding and starts getting a little bit more emotional because – we did agree that it, this will be 80% comedy, 20% right. drama, that most of the drama is on the back end. And that's yeah. what I really want to express. Yeah, I definitely want to have a story with it. Now, uh, expanding what you said about production value, to me, like <clears throat> the hallmark of any good podcast, fictional, non fictional, is how easy, easily you can get lost like in your head listening to the podcast. Exactly. I feel like, you know, the first couple episodes, like, you know, I understood what was going on. Like, I can, I can follow it pretty well, but like, like I said earlier, like after around like the third or fourth episode, like I could just easily imagine everything in my head, like all the characters, what they're doing, how they're saying things. I can imagine like the room that they're that they're standing in. It was just very, you know, by by episode twelve, like I was just I was watching it in my head. Oh yeah, and yeah. and that's my job primarily. I mean, that is I I take Robert's idea and I turn it into I breathe life into it. Yeah, and you know the fact that I'm doing that successfully for at least you and i know a lot of other people absolutely means i'm doing my job and i know that during a lot of production meetings your specific comments were like your biggest comments the ones that i really focused in on because they applied to me was i like that you just waited here and Mm. the pacing and it it really enveloped you like there was a lot of times where i could have just put dialogue right away but i just i breathed space into a to an environment because he was either frustrated or he was trying to – he just got done with something emotionally yeah. taxing. So I just wanted to give him that space. You basically gave the listener time to kind of comprehend what was going on. And you know, not, it's not dead air. He's walking around. He's pulling yeah. vodka or mm-hmm. scotch out of his, his dresser or his, his desk. He's leaning back in his chair. So yeah. Things like – he's going through papers. I mean that, like that. that kind yeah. of comes into full fruition in episode 11 when he's figuring out the case. That, that was one of your favorite scenes up until episode 12. The scotch right. scene. The scotch yeah. scene. Yeah, the Humphrey Bogart. The, the problem with the world is that everybody is a few drinks behind. Right. Yep. So like, I think that is where he kind of – hello, Santa Claus. That's where he kind of – that's where you kind of like hit – or that was your favorite scene up until then, up until episode twelve. So I think that um, lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting we're getting mass we, distractions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, distractions like Santa Claus right. in Robert, the background. as the writer yeah. of Doppel Abner Hurt, mm-hmm. I guess the question probably applies to you the most. Where do you see Doppel Abner Hurt going? All right. Well, in future basically, seasons? yeah, this is the one that counts, people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so listen um, up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So definitely pay attention to what I'm about to say because it's really important. Um, Keys is dead. I'm done. I'm oh, out. wow. I'm out. out wow. wow. Bye. All Perfect. right. I guess the. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, okay. Let's see that. that yeah. I quit. Part of shit. So you're saying I get a sequel? <laughs> yeah. Just drop no. the mic. <laughs> I Edith, they, they Edith takes arms. over the position of Keys. He's dead for real. <laughs> yeah, he's a fucking <laughs> Do really I get a dead. sexy secretary? No, uh, honestly, no. like, the reason why we had that um, Radio Man outro was because I wanted people to realize that there is a season two coming. Mm-hmm. I don't want people to think, like, oh, season one, that's it. That's case one. They're done. I want people to realize that there's going to be multiple seasons. So I'm mm-hmm. getting shot and Desmond Grant getting away is something that's going to weigh on him. I'd like to see Desmond Grant be sort of his Moriarty, as it were. Like, I'd, I'd like to see Desmond Grant being sort of like the, the white whale. Yeah, he's going to be Moby Dick and you're... Sherlock Holmes. Not <laughs> Obi- Obi- Dick. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, basically, yeah, he's going to be the one that got away. Um, season two is going to come around. There's going to be another case. Each one's labeled case. You know, this one's labeled case one, the silver casket. So obviously there's going to be another case. Probably be similar. Are we going to get more insight into Key's backstory? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like the idea that I didn't didn't tell everything. There's definitely stuff like... Why doesn't he always use technology? Obviously, he said because he looks up to these characters and movies back in the day. But right. is that really it? And also, the she devil he mentions her a couple times, but like, really, who is this? Like, who is his ex-wife? Oh yeah, you're going to be also introducing new characters, right? right? The she devil, 
And then uh, what was the other big? There's like another big. Oh, the incident. The he incident. doesn't talk about the incident too much. Arthur mentions it at one point. The incident that got him fired from the BHPD. Right. Like he got fired from the Bentwood Heights Police Department. And you don't know why. And I know why. But I haven't ran it in you? yet. Oh, I know okay. why. <laughs> He's the only one that knows. Hey, Arthur knows why. <laughs> Arthur knows why. But Jonathan, who oh, plays Arthur, big doesn't know jumbo. why. Yeah. <laughs> What's your problem? All right. Well, so, yeah. uh, not to toot our own horn here, but well, spe- well, um, real quick. Speaking of, uh, go, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I was about to say, like, uh, you know, we've. Uh, I mean, we're proud of what we've done, but apparently, we're not the only ones who have uh, thought chimed in, kind of chimed in. Like, uh, we've got a lot of feedback from you, the listeners, about the uh, the podcast so far. You know, we've actually, like, uh, Jonathan, do you want to tell everybody the. Uh, the good news? Yeah. Well, besides getting a celebrity to guest star. In yeah, that's finale. huge, too. Yeah. Chris uh, Moore was, Chris that's Moore kind was, of a big deal. Huge. Yeah, that's kind of a big deal. That was great. And, and to, ha- like, to have him do that at the end was like, kind of legitimized us a little bit. It was like, hey, great. Awesome. Well, yeah. that's what I mean we're hoping for is having like more celebrity guests in the future. Sure. And uh, this season we just got announced. Uh, we spent all the royalty checks from season one. Yep. And uh, we... Basically, he started Kickstarter to get Leonardo DiCaprio Can't wait for season two. season two. All $50 million that we raised. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. Money well spent. No, uh, <laughs> in all actuality, we just got um, not just nominated, but we won a an award. It's our Doppel Avenue's first award. First. Right. Nice. First yes. award. First, first of award. many. First and of yeah, many this to is, come. This is in kind to, uh, thanks to soundslikeanearful.com. And what they do is... Uh, they give nods to podcasts, and they just hand out awards like uh, most creative editing, you know, um, best new podcast. And just today, um, well, a couple of days ago, if you're listening to this on release, um, early this week, November 17th or 16th is what it is? 17th. Who knows? November 17th, 17th. we won the award for The Wordsmith, uh, which is... Are there 17 days in November? I think so. Okay. I know. I think there's 18. At least. All right. Uh, this award is specifically reserved for like scripted podcasts and um, ones that are more like fictional based. Uh, the art of writing for radio is how they put it. And uh, so this one we won for uh, their favorite scripted show. And uh, it's for Doppel Avenue Hurt, the wordsmith. Yeah. So thank hey. you very much to uh, Podnods and sounds like an earful dot com. When yeah. I saw that award, I masturbated furiously. <laughs> I think they have an award for that. Yes, you were already masturbating <laughs> furiously. Well, I masturbated furiously. I saw we got the award, and I kept masturbating okay, furiously. There you go. So would um, you say you got the biggest boner? The yeah. biggest <laughs> boner. By the, by the way, sounds like an earful.com has its own podcast. I checked it out. It's very much like a Radio Lab or a This American Life. Or not, or it's like an NPR sort of podcast, storytelling podcast. It's, it's great. So I encourage you, if you're listening to this, to check it out. It sounds like an earful.com. Yeah. And, and like, and, and we got a lot of like, just like fan base from other people rating our rating our stuff, and we even have some people who are, are going to join our cast for next season, yeah. which is pretty exciting. Give a shout out, Julia W. D. Harrison will be joining the cast next uh, next season, and she will also be joining us on our new ventures, which we'll talk about shortly. And then also Mallory at Podcastitude. She's been our biggest fan since. Oh, man, day she's one. plugged everything. Yeah. Thanks, plugged ladies. Everything. We appreciate that very much. Yeah. Not to mention, I mean, and we've even gotten like other reviews on Stitcher and yeah. and like Reddit and stuff like that, which is awesome. Yeah, and if you you know if you haven't gone out to the Doppel Avenue Hurt iTunes site or the Stitcher or whatever, just hey, do us a favor, give us a five star rating. You don't even have to give us a five star. Give us an honest rating. Write a review. Well, That's all I really if want it's to like say. a one or two yeah, star, I want to hold off on that. Back off. <laughs> Maybe you should fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> No, Honestly, seriously, just just go out there and give us a, a, a star rating and a review, and yeah. that helps us tremendously. Yeah, honestly, though, if you're listening, if you haven't sent us any feedback, just go ahead and send us because we do appreciate any and all types of feedback, positive, negative, neutral. Like, it's all extremely helpful to us. Yeah. And w- we were talking more about, like, getting a lot of the fans involved um, and, and seeing, like, just getting, like, ideas from them. So don't be afraid to send us ideas of yeah. – you know, if you have ideas for Doppel Don't Avenue expect Hurt. royalty checks, though. I will say that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, if you, get, if you want to get in contact with us, really easy. Shark, shark, dropper. shark dropper at gmail.com. You know, yeah. if you have ideas for the show or if you maybe want to voice a, a character on the on the podcast, there's we're a, completely you, open to that. If you go to sharkdropper.com, there's even a contact page that goes directly to our email. Yeah, or, so, I mean, don't think that you won't be heard if you try and get a hold of us. 
Or reach out to us on Twitter at Shark Trapper. If you if you feel like you want to voice a character, if you want to do something in that regard, just let us know and we'll uh, we'll we'll test you out. We will we will audition you and we will we will critique your voice. Oh yeah. So right, uh you know, before we wrap up real quick, I feel like we should also mention, you know, the other kind of voice actors that have been part of Doppler Avenue Hurt who aren't here. Absolutely. Like uh, Nick Engelhard, Jesse Levine, Dan Johnson, Amber Simpson. Uh, Adam Jetmore. Adam Jetmore. Shannon Sh- Lee. Hope Sh- Davis. Yeah. There's a bunch. Sh- everybody else really in the Shannon Shark McCarthy. Chopper stable, so Shannon to speak. McCarthy, yeah. We, Neil LaRose. If we, yeah. yeah, if we forget anybody, sorry, but like, yeah, we definitely have a huge cast list for season Basically one. just Shark Chopper. Just <laughs> right. the entire Shark Chopper. Yeah, if you listen to the cast list, you'll see how many people actually lent their voices. Well, to it's them. pretty interesting. A lot of the folks that do the voices will either have podcasts or will have podcasts on our network. Very that's shortly. true. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. I mean, and that's, I mean, should we talk about that? Like what's upcoming? Absolutely. Fictional wise. Fictional. I think the, yeah, go ahead, Robert. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. I'll take over. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's the way you said well, that. Don't, like, don't stop. Okay. Right. That's your, that's Robert. your shit. Listen, all right. All right. I've been drinking a lot of champagne. I'll give a shit. Dude, I'm drunk. You're, <laughs> you're actually I'm in your second bottle of champagne. Jim and right Listen, there's no. That's the third bottle of champagne. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Pretty warm. I'm feeling pretty warm right now. Well, good. Okay. There's a cold front in Florida right now. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. It's cold in Florida. Is that why it's so fucking hot in here? Get on with it. Anyways, um, yeah, we have actually a few series coming up. Um, uh, one that's going to be coming out soon is called uh, Cop Doctors. It's basically, <laughs> Amy loves this title. <laughs> I was singing the Crossfire theme song yes. from the 90s. You'll get caught in the... You'll cop. get caught up in the... Cop yeah. Doctor. Crossfire. I think it's... Cop Doctors. Cop Docs. Cop Docs. Cop Docs. Oh, cop Docs. Oh, cop Can you make cop that doesn't doc. sound good as Cop Docs. <laughs> now i got to change it. Yeah. Now I'll do like the Jenga theme song. If you'd like a, if you'd like a very rough... Uh, sound of what Cop Doctors will sound like. You can download the latest episode of Shark Dropper. I don't know which one. It, it was, was like 44. 44. 44. Or something, yeah. We did like a little read through of it. I mean, it's basically Cop, Cop Doctors is going to be kind of a almost raunchier, Doppel Avenue Hurt, very <laughs> fast paced. Everything that doesn't fit into Doppel Avenue Hurt that's is too, going into Cop Doctors. That's <laughs> yeah. too. That's just too out there. Yeah. It's more that's, improv, right? It's, like, it's improv. Well, it's going to be, be very. Improv, it's yeah. going to be very raw. It's whereas Doppel Avenue was very intimately and in, and in, in painstakingly edited. This will kind of be like slammed together and just and just thrown out there as and like Doppel here Avenue, it is. Doppel Avenue Hurt had like character arcs. I mean, this one will have like semi character arcs, but it's going to be very like like I said, it's going to be stuff that like. Stuff that doesn't fit into to Doppel Avenue Hurt, it's it's gonna fit into Cop Doctors, and it's gonna be like kind of this just very fast paced, ten minute episodes. Uh, I have to I'm ask sure, though, but, like, yeah. are they cops that are doctors, or are they doctors that are also Here's cops? Here's the premise. Okay, <laughs> they are cops by day, okay. doctors at night. Nice. Whoa. Who are they? No, nice. never, never the other way around. Two, like, no, 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 no. <laughs> cops in the day. Never, <laughs> never, never the two shot me. Yeah, yeah. Do I, do I have a role in this? Yeah, everyone's gonna have a everyone's, role. Everyone's everyone's role. It's gonna be very, very awesome. Uh, Cop it's gonna doctors. be awesome, like just, just name, editing wise. You got to tell me the names wise. of the two characters. Yeah, the two characters. They're both named Justin. One is Justin Time. The other one is Justin Case. <laughs> <laughs> and basically, they're just these two cops. They're very like they play off of each other. That's where a lot of the improv is gonna uh, come from. I think uh, Kyle and I are gonna uh, voice the main characters. John's either going to be the captain or the narrator. We're not sure which one yet. We'll see. (laughs) Narrator plays an important part, so maybe he'll just play the narrator of each episode because the narrator just comes in and describes what's happening. But they're going to be very fast-paced episodes. Uh, The other thing we have coming out is not comedy-based. It's going to be uh, horror is uh, a little podcast called Paralyzed, and that's our first horror fiction. It's going to be a lot more serious. Um, JJ and Amy have characters... That are gonna show up in it. Not Paul and Edith, right? Oh, not no, Paul no, and Edith. Yeah, okay. not He's the same show characters. Up this, is the, this is the first time we've actually uh, talked about the name, so this is it. I mean, yeah, the, our next paralyzed. project is Paralyzed. Paralyzed, and it's gonna be a lot serious. It's gonna be um, a lot serious. Jesus Christ, I'm drunk. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's it's gonna be questions. more sure. serious, I guess. Um, yeah, it's gonna. Uh, Jonathan's gonna edit it. Um, John yeah, it's gonna, be, gonna star in it. He's gonna star in it. Yeah, he's actually, also, yeah, he's you're also writing the original Wait, music for it too. I, it, it'll be completely <laughs> originally scored wow, that's uh, by amazing. me, and that's yeah, awesome. everyone here insane. is actually a voice yeah. as a main character. Why do I always play me. somebody's best friend? 
Jonathan hey, described. You're not good enough for the main. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not good enough for main, so I just like best friends. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hey, listen. That's just Jonathan. Long, whatever. Jonathan described this podcast as as uh, masturbation for a an audio engineer such as himself. He he graduated as an audio engineer for so for him this is like very exciting, and I, I can't wait to hear what you're gonna do with this. Well, because think of it this way: you can you can exercise all of the old horror tropes, but here's what I love about horror films. My two favorite. I don't even want to say my two favorite, but my favorite horror films are the ones where you don't really know what's after them, what's mm-hmm. coming after them, or what the creature or right. the antagonistic force looks like. You know, you, you like you take like an example like Paranormal Activity. You never mm-hmm. see what that fucking thing is, and that makes it ten times more creepy. It's the right. atmospherical, like the. It's obviously there's not vision with a podcast, but the sound for. Horror film is really important for creating the atmosphere. Exactly, and, especially for and it's your imagination can take you so much farther than mm-hmm. just presenting to you. This is what it looks like. So Plus, technically speaking, this is gonna be way more complex than Doppel Avenue Hurt. This is gonna be insane. Well, yeah. it's gonna yeah. be like yeah, it's gonna be more realistic. It's gonna be a slow burn. I mean, that was one of the biggest things. Yeah. It's like when I started writing it, I said that I wanted it to be. I didn't want it to be fast-paced horror. I didn't want to like just have people dying like that regular kind of movie-ish kind of like have somebody die in the first opening scene yeah. kind of thing. I wanted it to be a slow burn, get to know at least some of the characters before things start going down. And, and when you start realizing what's happening, there are some scenes that like so far, I mean, we've written, I mean, there's like half of the season has been written. We just got to start recording and... Which once, we have. Which we have just started recording. And once we start doing that, I mean, we're going to piece it together. And I think it's going to be – I mean, it gave me chills writing it, so I can't imagine what it's going to sound oh. like. And there's, like there's, no, there's no real release date right now. Do right. we have a ballpark at least? Yeah, we do have a ballpark. It's going to be sometime summer. Uh, late summer. Summer 2015. 2015. Right. Um, it's going to kind of coincide. It's going to come out before Doppel Avenue Hurt, I think. Yeah, I think it, so because it's going to have more episodes than Doppel Avenue Hurt does, but they're going to be a little bit shorter. Right. Um, Cop th- Doctors is going to be, I think, earlier. Oh, real quick. Uh, so season two of Doppel Avenue Hurt, that's going to come out like around next fall? Like August. Yeah, we're, it'll be around the same time, okay. I, I, I think, yeah. August yeah, that's, that's fair because, I mean, that's a year from when we – so, so I mean, the, the, loose, the loose schedule right now is uh, June of 2015. You're going to see Horror – or I'm sorry, Paralyzed. Uh, August, you're going to see Doppel Avenue Hurt season two. And then Cop Doctors, we're just going to pepper we're just gonna in. Throw it in. Cop Doctors, yeah, that will be more of just – It'll show up when we have an episode done. We'll finish an episode. We'll throw it out there. Yeah. yeah. There's no schedule for Cop Doctors. Which just, is kind of good. Which it matches it matches what it is. What it is. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's and nothing. we should also mention we also we're putting out like a full lineup of non-fictional podcasts. Right. Too. Yes, we are. Yeah. Uh, we Word of Bay starring Kyle Starring Apiard, myself, Jonathan, Jonathan Moss, and yes. uh, Nicholas Englehart, who plays Peter O'Reilly. Uh, Peter O'Reilly the right. Drunk we also the have uh, the Shark Driver podcast where it's Robert, Kyle, and me, just and we uh, random shit. just, just kind of blowing the microphone for about an hour. Yeah, <laughs> just yeah. doing, just doing whatever every other yeah. fuck does when they get mics. Like, like, yeah. when, like we're making a podcast. Yeah, hey, yeah. it's just Whoa. us talking about shit. Ooh, <laughs> Robert, what are you doing right now? I can't get any more champagne. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, I think we're a little <laughs> drunk right now. And then you guys also have horror play too, right? Oh yeah, the right? horror play, which is yes. our search for the scariest game. We when, play. When am I going to play one of these games? Because I can't play horror games. I'm really <laughs> awful. Well. <laughs> Okay, that's, that's a reason not to put yeah, you on horror. There you go. That's why you're not on it. <laughs> God damn it! Can't play him. <laughs> keys. And we actually have an Academy Award podcast coming up where we rate uh, yeah. each year's yes. best picture nominees. Yeah, and there's we... a, there's a whole bunch of stuff in the pipeline, like uh, fictional and not fictional, this like a uh, next year. Yeah. We're so for lot. those of you listening at home, like uh, who are fans of uh, everything we're doing, like uh, you know, we got more stuff coming out for you. Shark Trapper so. Studios, man. We got everything. Yeah, Shark Trapper Studios. Yeah, we got video game podcasts, the debate podcast, the top five podcasts. We have a lot of Shark stuff. Shark Sharkdropper.com. Yeah. Games. Yeah. Yeah, so definitely just check out Sharkdropper.com. Um, you can search for us on iTunes. I mean, we're on Stitcher. We're on everywhere. Everywhere. Just Google us. Yeah. Google us. Oh. Are we on Google? Yeah. We're on Google. Okay. We're the only nope, thing. That's the one thing we? we're not on. <laughs> we're Did the we only thing on Google. Ah, we messed up. We oh. messed up somewhere down the line. Damn it. How do you get on Google? Yeah, we're, we're, if you if you Google search Shark Dropper, we're the only thing. Right. All right. Right. 
Does anybody have any last uh, <laughs> last thoughts, last words? I just want to request, as we sign out, can we just sign out as their characters, please? Yes. Oh, God. Okay. As I looked around the room, I saw that everybody was gearing up to sign in. Or sign out. Or sign out. <laughs> what are you saying, Big Jimbo? You think the podcast is over? Cut this fucking mic off! I don't really know what to say right now, but I do want to say that I love Jim and Jones. Jesus Christ, Paul. Oh, I see what how it is. Well, uh, that's uh, it uh, for uh, the podcast. Uh, uh, is there uh, anything else uh, you want to add to it? Uh, I'm a Robert. Uh. I'm Jonathan. I hate my life. <laughs> I'm Jose Carabella. I'm Amy Luray. I'm Kyle Appleyard. And I'm John Lasswolf. Thank you so much for listening, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Top 11 Hurt, written by Robert M. Lamb, edited by Jonathan Moss, starring voices by Kyle Appleyard, Anita LaRose, Amy Laurie, Jose Carabello, Dan Johnson, Jonathan Moss, Adam Jetmore, Amber Simpson, and Shannon McCarthy.